Joining us now, Sydney Morning uh, Herald and Nine News senior sports reporter Michael Chemis. Welcome to the run home with Bozo and Missile today. Hey, boys. How are we? Good, thanks, Mikey. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Can't complain for the other. That's good. Come <laughs> now, on, tell us what you know, buddy. Give us a, what, what's going on. <laughs> oh, look, there's plenty happening in rugby league. It doesn't stop, does it? I know there's sort of all eyes on the uh, the test match tomorrow night, but there's so much happening off the field as well. Mm. Uh, the talk during the week about Jerome Luai, it's, uh, hasn't that heated up over the last few days with Jerome and uh, after Ivan's comments the other day mm. about Jerome potentially being a risk for other clubs, given the fact that he hasn't played uh, that chief playmaker role before, did a little bit for Samoa, taking him to the World Cup final, and then the next day, Jerome Luai on Instagram, know you're worth that caption. It's um, <laughs> it's an, intrig- it's, it's an it's intriguing good. little it's yeah. an intriguing little plot at the moment that's unfolding at Penrith. And uh, look, to be honest with you, I don't I don't have an issue what, with what Ivan actually said. What mm, he said no. is true. The fact is, he it's will a, be at risk for hundred percent. No matter yeah. who you get, Mikey, in, in any sport for for whatever price, where even if it's a free transfer, it's still a risk. It's a risk, yeah. yeah. 100%. And, yeah. and the premise of what he's saying is spot on. You're going to pay him seven figures. He hasn't played seven before. But I, I agree. But the reality is I didn't expect the coach of the go- of the club trying to keep him to actually come out and say that publicly. And mm, knowing he's... Jerome's personality and the guy that he is, surely that they knew that was going to ruffle some feathers. I, I, I just I, I think I, I think you're right, I, Michael. I yeah, I think, I think you're right, but I think that's why he done it. I think he's done it to ruffle feathers, to put a bit of a seed of doubt. It's a bit of like a psyop operation. He's put a seed of doubt either way. But the bottom line is this. How old is Luai, Michael? He's, he's 26. 26. In the prime of his career. Yeah. I have to hate talking about this salary cap. Because like I said, he's in the break. I really don't think that people should be punished for being successful. But I would re-sign him. I mean, you know, they've won three premierships on the trot. Yeah. Arguably the greatest, one of the greatest teams of all time. Um, and they're going for a, a, what would be a record-breaking in the modern era, a, a, well, in any era, I would say, mm. with the exception of when, when St. St. George, George. Yeah, uh, to go four straight. He's got, you know, he's got his four best years ahead of him. If they can afford it because of the salary cap, uh, I, I would I would pay the money he's worth because you're going well, to repla- question, you're gonna have to go and replace. You're going to have to go and replace him anyway. Well, you do, but the thing is, I think he's worth what they've offered him, mate. To Penrith, I think he's worth eight fifty. To a, to another club who are willing to take the risk, as Ivan said, mm. they're not going to offer him eight seventy five. I think they're going to get him out of Penrith. They're going to have to offer him $1.1 million, a long-term deal, four or five years, and say, mate, you come over here. We'll give you the keys to the castle. This is your club, your team. Come be our saviour. Yeah. Now, does Jerome want to do that? I don't know. I don't want to put words in his mouth. I don't know what he's driving for, the driving factor behind his decision here. It may be money. It may be the, the, mm. the ability to go over there and have your own team and prove to people that I can be the big dog, that I'm not Nathan yeah. Cleary's puppet or Nathan Cleary's shadow and, yeah, and everyone's saying I don't, saying I don't that think he's that. Team. I just think they're both better players with the other one next to them as well. I think that's a question you should ask him next press conference. What does he actually want? I mean, yeah. and there's two sides of that coin. I believe actually that as all of us do, you know, we all get into sport, in our particular sport, to be winners and to be famous, right? The money is secondary as you're growing up. I believe that he is one of them people. But also there's a flip side of that coin to think, well, he's won three premierships. Mm. You know, so that, you know, that, that's, that's you know, that, no one can take that away from him ever. He knows it's a very short career because of the brutality of rugby league and the sport it is. And maybe coming back to his Instagram, he feels as though that he should be, and I think he is worth over a million. But the thing is, is the salary cap, which comes back to my original point, how do you have a system in place that punishes people for being successful? I still don't know how they get away with it. Yeah, it's a big issue, Bozza. Uh, now, uh, Michael, Adam Fanua Blake, this has been the story of the last, well, 24, 48 hours. Uh, reports now that he's going to stay at the Warriors. Yeah, it sort of unfolded yesterday that reports started to come out that Adam Fanua Blake had requested an immediate release from the club. That was true. He, he did want to leave. His family reasons wanted to come back home and be closer to, to family uh, for personal reasons, given around their health and whatnot, uh, which you can understand. Now, the Warriors, though, you can understand as a business and the way they went this year, they don't want to release arguably the best front row in the competition mm. and on such short notice. Now, I know the Warriors have been asking questions for the past week about, uh, without giving much away to other clubs, but asking them what was you know, available in that position in the front row and the back row potentially. But reality is they need him next year. And I think, yeah, from what you saw this after, uh, this morning, there's an agreement now with Adam Fanua Blake with the club that he will hang around for 12 months. And in that time, at least allow the Warriors then to find a suitable replacement that's not going to – because if he goes now, this that, that derails their entire campaign. Yeah, like you yeah, don't replace enough. Adam Fanua Blake. 
So I think that yeah, you know, there's a mutual understanding there that um, that there's going to be an opportunity for him to leave at the end of 2024. Which, to be fair, then because right now there's only one or two clubs that can afford an Adam Fanua Blake at a million dollars for next year that have the actual salary cap space. Mm. Next year, though, if, when everyone knows that he's leaving, it's technically a free agent right now. Then which, there's going to be a whole heap of clubs in for him. Which clubs can afford him, Mike? Right now, yeah. the Dragons can afford him. The okay. Dragons have got over a, more than a million, a lot more than a million dollars in salary cap space for next year. They've had a few things go. I think they, you know, Cody Ramsey, obviously, unfortunate with his health issues. He hasn't been able to play. Jaden Sullivan, he's left to the Tigers on over a half a million at the Dragons. Potentially even more, another half a million with Junior Ramon uh, with his case at the moment. Uh, whether or not he actually gets... Uh, sent to prison over that incident that he was in court about last uh, last month. So the Dragons have a lot of money. They could afford Fanua Blake right now, but uh, the Warriors have come to an agreement with him that he he will stay at New Zealand for 12 months and then suss out where, where he is. I was thinking uh, you're made off 100% footy, the godfather, feel good. I was like, oh, surely he's been in contact with <laughs> AFB. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, they would love him. They would absolutely – they're, they're desperate for a front rower. They want him. The thing is, though, they have spent a lot of money now. They've bought a lot of players, and I imagine if – if, look, look, hypothetically, if Vanilla Blake, if he was available right now, they would have had to make some changes to their roster to get him in. 2025, though, that, that's a different story. And if Vanilla Blake is going to be available, there's no doubt the Bulldogs will be in. They'll, they'll be asking questions. But it is it is a lot of money. It's a it's a million dollars. He's going to want a longer-term deal. Can you, you know, can you rebuild your club when they are so desperate for a number seven mm. and then throw a million dollars at a front rower? Like that, that's to, to me, the Bulldogs, their priority – Right now is a front rower, yes, but at a million dollars, I don't know if they budgeted a million dollars yeah. for a front rower. Mm. Uh, the Roosters, uh, Siwa Wong looks like he'll re-sign, but Joey Manu, um, there's a lot of talk around him, and well, Shane Flanagan's been very open saying they want him at the Dragons. Ooh. Yeah, Flanagan wants it. Every, everyone, we might get yeah, a start if, uh, we can, if we can throw a cutout ball or two. No, look, to be fair <laughs> to Flano, that's that's what he needs to show people at the club that he's out there being active in in the marketplace and I think Ben Hunt will welcome that given the dramas that have unfolded with Ben Hunt over the last six months so I just can't see Joey Manu going people that know Joey Manu people that know the Roosters setup they find it hard to fathom that Joey Manu is going to leave the Roosters regardless of what the Dragons Mm. have to offer I, I don't think the Dragons believe that they're a chance of getting Joey Manu but one thing that they will do is they'll go after him they'll make him a pretty big offer that'll have to turn down. And whether that makes the Roosters pay more for Joey Manu, well, then that means someone else will get squeezed out over over time. So yeah. I, I don't think there is any, uh, there's there's no damage for the Dragons going for Joey Manu. They're, that's the kind of player they need. I just don't see it happening. It'd be so funny if, it'd be so funny on the top of what Mikey just said that, you know, if one of these clubs are trying to make the team that already got the player pay a pay bit more. extra. But, yeah, yeah. you know, all of a sudden the, the player in the club, okay, you can have him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, all right, we'll get back to you. Hang on. Double bluff. <laughs> when you get back to what, on Monday, Monday. Well, uh, yeah, Monday. Right, right, right. <laughs> the, the, the big question about Joey Manu, though, uh, Michael, is is playing fullback, right? Like he, most people are of the opinion that he's wasted at centre for the Roosters in that star-studded back line. If he wants to make himself, you know, a fully-fledged star and get the plaudits that he deserves – the popular opinion is that he needs to play fullback. Yeah, but this comes back to the point we made about Jerome Lua. What's motivating Joey Manu in this situation? I, I think Joey Manu is the kind of guy who's got an incredible amount of loyalty to that club. I think his, his younger brother has now been signed by the club. He's coming through the yeah, system there. Mm. His father's got a very close relationship with with the Rooster Supremo, Nick Politis. Like there, there are people who aren't. Well, some people who aren't motivated by being the superstar in the team. Now, I'm not mm. saying Joey Manu is one of them, but every person's different. Yeah, everyone's now, different. I, I just You're don't right. know. I just don't know what Joey Manu. Yeah, Teddy's the fullback there, mate. I can't see yeah. Teddy moving out no. of that no. position anytime he's soon. He's only thirty. And he a, feels old, but he's only thirty. Yeah. But it's a very well, good and, point. And, that and Robbo is not that guy. Yeah, uh, Michael makes a very good point. Everyone has got a different circumstance. So yeah, um, there's a player in football and soccer. People should know him. He played for Manchester United, Chelsea, Inter Milan, Romelo Lukaku. Yep. He basically came from absolutely nothing. You know, he tells yep. stories how he remembers when, you know, basically they had nothing to eat or drink or anywhere. So his motivation, he said this, when it was money to help not only pay for himself, yeah, true, but for his family and all yeah. that. So everyone's situation is different. Then you've got on the other end of the scale as well, where sometimes you've got dominant agents. So, okay, I'm not saying that's wrong for me. I'm saying, okay, well, but they, for for whatever reason, want you to go somewhere and that. It's amazing sometimes, you know, as an athlete, yeah. there are times when you're a little bit down and weak, not only physically but mentally, 
that can play a big part. Your own mm. personal family can play. You know, what about if you go somewhere and you're happily married and all of a sudden your wife and your kids are going, listen, I, I, I can't live here. Then what? Yeah. You might be loving it, but they're not. So there's always yeah. a story behind whatever decision, in my opinion, people make. It's whether or not that story is sufficient for people to go, okay, I understand, or they, or they go, no, I'm not having it. So uh, yeah, and the, man the manager part of this is is interesting, as you said, Bozza, just then. Like, depending on the manager, there are some managers who, depending on the situation, like for Jerome Lua right now, he's got a new agent. And there's all sorts of talk out of Penrith. They believe that there's a potential that Jerome Luai's agent that he's just hired won't get a cut of the deal if he stays at Penrith because technically that was offered to Jerome before he signed go. his new agent. Well, so well, so well, it, well, if that well. is the case, I'm not saying it is because that, that's, no, there's a no, talk. You're saying, yeah. Yeah, no, you're saying that's a rumour right? and you're saying it more in a hypothetical way on the on the back of what I said. 100%. I understand that. Understand it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, if, if, if you're his agent and you're not getting a cut of a Penrith deal, surely you're going to look around and see what's elsewhere and that may sway your thinking or may sway what, how you try and – you know, persuade your client or convince hmm. your client what's good for him. So, look, it's th there are a heap of factors that go into these deals, and they're more complex than just the player saying, yep, I love this club or I don't love this club. All right, so Flano, let's assume that he's missed out on Fenua Blake, or he has missed, and he's missing out on Manu. He wants to sign players. Have they got space in the salary cap? Who who should he be looking at? I, I don't think 24 is going to be a, a vastly different than George Lawara's side, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be... The same. It's going to be pretty much the same side. They may be able to add one or two. That's not going to make a huge amount of difference. But what they will do is actually have a coach. Well, with all due respect to Anthony Griffin, the criticism of Anthony Griffin was that team, that football team wasn't run like an NRL football team. And you speak to a lot of people who are around the club and seeing the difference uh, having Anthony. Yeah, with, with, with all due respect to Anthony, I don't think there are people in that club who felt like he was the right man for the job or the players were getting the development they needed to take the next step. Understandable. This is going to be a test of Shane Flanagan's coaching now because mm. with a similar roster, if he can transform the way they play, well, then you turn around and say, okay, well, it is coaching. We have improved with that roster. Top point. Look what, he's point done with, look what he's done with the same roster. What's he going to do when we get 20 you know, more players in 2025? No. So that's... That's where the Dragons are thinking at the moment. 100%. Top if we've point. got the coach that we think, then he'll, he'll make a difference in 24. 100%. And if I was Shane Flanagan, you know, I'd say to the board, I don't want no one. I believe I can take these current bunch of players far further than where they're playing. And let me go and show this to you right now. <laughs> Brooks, he's a Dragons fan. He's having heart palpitations. No, no, no. <laughs> the same no, roster. No, no, no. <laughs> the same <laughs> roster. Michael was, no, no, Michael, Michael was basically saying that in his point. That's not saying top point, right? That's exactly what I'd be saying if I was Shane. I'd be going, listen, listen, listen. Forget about anyone. Yeah. Let me show you what I can do with these bunch of players. Mm. And then next season, after I show you, if I want to add a couple, then we add a couple. But I believe that this team are completely underperforming, and I'm going to show you why. Now, if they haven't won a game after eight weeks, then resign. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, I would be saying that. I'd be uh, saying that. Yeah? Michael, tomorrow night, but, uh, but we've, a... we've got the uh, Pacific Championship. Um, Australia and New Zealand. Can you give us a bit of a tip? Any any news heading into that game? The Kiwis have named unchanged lineup, so it's a little concerning for them, but they're back in New Zealand. I reckon there's an upset tomorrow night. Back in Ooh, New Zealand, wow. as you said, I, I, I can see an upset tomorrow night. I look, yeah, it's it's it'll be good for international rugby league if that's the case. I think that the the game has taken significant steps in the last few years, and. As much as I love to see Australia win, I, I don't mind seeing them lose. It just the interest grows, and I think on the back of a, a massive year for rugby league in New Zealand, given what the Warriors achieved in the competition, I, I'd like to see New Zealand win. I think they can. Mm. I think they can. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting to say. Interesting to see the way it pans out. I, I love what Boswell was saying earlier. Though. It sort of got me thinking. Obviously, with his with the round ball hat on, I, I just think what he, the point that he made about Flanagan. It's similar to what Ange is going through at the moment with. Yep. We're Tottenham, isn't it? Like you, you, you lose Harry even Kane, more so. The roster is, even more so. That's yeah, why well, I think he, he wasn't he wasn't too disappointed that Harry Kane went. He was like, okay, no problem. He ba yeah. I back yeah. myself. Yeah, I actually make it better for me because I don't have to manage a player who could be unsettling and who's a top player. But I'm 100 percent great point, Mike. Great comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm. it's uh, you're right there. I, 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 I sorry <laughs> about that. Mike. Well, not <laughs> you. I'm not saying you're right. The missile. After I said about Harry Kane, it looked as though he lost, he long, he lost a long lost I friend. Just, yeah. I was just googling <laughs> where yeah. Harry Kane went. I was trying to Bayern figure Munich, out if he's Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich, who Munich, lost yeah. this week in the German <laughs> Cup to a team in the third. 
division of German football. Yeah. There you go. Yeah? <laughs> that's another thing. That's another thing. That's greener. another thing rugby league should consider. Having a cup competition for all rugby league teams in the country to, to partake in. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. FA Cup style. That'd be yeah. awesome. Why not? Remember the old days? Oh, well, you were too young. You were born in 991, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, Mikey, how old are you, Mikey? <laughs> I was born in 88, 35. All right, so I don't know if you remember. I don't know if anyone remember. So hopefully someone listening will remember. Amco Cup, you? Panasonic remember? Cup. Yeah, Panasonic. Panasonic. Oh, 89. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, well, that turned Paramount around. Still, yeah. won? No, we didn't win it. We came second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little forward to every Wednesday night. Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not? Uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Um, no doubt a lot of people will be jumping on the, the New Zealand bandwagon after hearing that tip. I like it. I could see an upset as well. Uh, Oh, I'm with Mike. Boys, I'm with Mike, but it'd be good for international <laughs> rugby league. It yeah. would be. If not, why don't you just have New South Wales and Queensland play as international teams? Yeah. Queensland to basically treat <laughs> treat Queensland like they're a national team anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they do. All right. Uh, that was Michael Chalmers joining us on the run home. Thanks to Sydney Morning Herald and Nine News.